All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 289 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and, you know, Fridays, I think I'm going to try to do this. I did this last Friday. I'm going to try to do it this Friday. I want to try to make this somewhat of a free-for-all where we just talk about maybe, you know, various topics and not, like, have one concrete topic for the episode. So last week I talked about just being a fan and, and what that means or whatever the case may be. Kind of a little bit out of the norm, but today... I'm going to just mix it up, give you a little bit of Atlanta Falcons and Georgia Southern um, information and news, uh, give you my opinion on those as well. So hopefully this works out, but it's all based on what you guys think. The, the viewership and the listenership has been phenomenal. I, re I really appreciate it. And you guys are the reason why this is going the way it is. If this is your first time here, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And today, I got a handful of topics on deck. I want to talk about Jared Benko and Coach Clay Helton. Athletic Director uh, Jared Benko and Head Coach Clay Helton uh, from Georgia Southern Football. If you don't know, those guys have like this... They have this chemistry and vibe with each other that I really want to talk about. I want to discuss that. Also, I want to touch on Calvin Ridley really, really, really quick. And I'm not going to touch on it too much because um, I really don't want to go there. But I want to give my opinions about Calvin Ridley and the mental health situation. Also, last but not least, I want to talk about wide receiver possibly being picked with the number eight pick for the Falcons. Todd McShay is out here saying that we may pick a wide receiver. I'm not buying it, but we're going to discuss that to close out the weekend. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Like I said, if this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Like If you want to hear more of this content and be notified of this content, First and foremost, hit the like button, share this video for so more of your friends can come over and listen and subscribe to the channel so you can be updated on any time I put up an episode. I do these episodes Monday through Friday and it usually be up by nine in the morning. So I try to get ahead of, you know, the your morning, something to listen to on the way to work or school or whatever the case may be. Also, this is on the podcast side of things as well. So if you don't want to just watch on YouTube or Rumble, which I am on YouTube or Rumble, you can also listen to the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and I'm also on Stitcher. So you can go and check those places out. I'm trying to expand on other areas of the podcast um, to go other places. So I'm really, really thinking about that. I'm just trying to put that in the work. So be on the lookout. Last but not least, if you want to donate, all the donate avenues are on in the link of the, in the description of the podcast and the video. If you find in your heart that you want to donate to help this podcast grow. All right, let's get into this. Jared Benko, Coach Clay Helton. Let me tell you something about these two guys. I watched the interview and I hyped this video. Well, I, I hyped this interview up for the past couple of days. And I want to say that. I want well, I wanted to talk about this just solely in in one episode, but no, I, you know I just let tell people to go listen to it or whatever the case may be, and I'm not going to really get into what they talked about because if you listen to Coach Clay Hilton, if you talk, listen to Coach I mean or AD Jared Binko, you kind of know what they want and their expectations for the football program. Now, if this is your first time here, you don't know anything about it. I honestly I can't do it justice. I really would uh, recommend you to go listen to that at your leisure. Uh, they give you pretty much a synopsis of everything that's happened since Coach Clay Helton was hired in November. So you kind of know what the deal is with, uh, with with the coaching situation if you go back and listen. Now, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis, not necessarily what they talked about, but the way they communicated back and forth. Now, usually when you see these type of interviews, you usually will say like, okay, it's kind of scripted, which most of them are. I mean, 98% of these type of interviews are scripted. But when you listen to these two talk, they like they feed off each other so well. Like they both have a vision to be great. They have a vision for this program to be great. And just for listening to them talk and go back and forth with the expectations and uh, the type of vision that they have, it looks like they're ready to play football now. Now, obviously, you got to go through the motions, getting the kids hyped up and ready to go, get them in practice mode or whatever. But the vision that they have is so phenomenal. I personally never seen it between a coach and an AD or a coach and a GM or whatever. I, I've never seen this before. And 
just listening to them talk about what type of philosophy Coach Helton wants to run and vice versa, the type of success uh, Jared Binko wants to have, it's just a beautiful thing. I think the interview was like maybe 30-something minutes. It, I mean, but from the get-go, from the get-go, it was just phenomenal. And and this is the type of thing that you would want to have in a program. I don't know how any of these other programs do in in you know in college football, let alone the Sun Belt. But I really like what I see when you got two guys who are heading a program to have the vision. Could, Jared Binko has a vision for all the athletic department to be successful. And it's starting to feed off on the other sports, not just football. And when you have a guy that comes in who has experience, had a Pac-12, won, won the Pac-12, played at a, you know, coached at a high level when it comes to being at Memphis and all these other places that he's been to, USC, for him to come here to Statesboro and, and try to bring that same philosophy bring other guys that have power five experience over to be great at a program like Georgia Southern, who's already known for having success just to continue that success and have them to be on the second and third level of the, of, of eras in the Georgia Southern era, you know, uh, history. It's a beautiful thing to say. I, you know, I think Sometimes I, you know, I always wanted to do something like this. I always wanted to do this podcast. I always wanted to talk sports about my favorite teams. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I feel that I came in at the right time because I remember watching, even when I was young, I remember watching the Paul Johnson, you know, era. I remember watching the 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 late end of Irk Russell's era, the, you know, and, and watching throughout the 90s and watching Georgia Southern go have their ups and downs and, and, and be champions and turn around and not be champions and come so close. I've watched so much. This is the first time I can honestly say, and I'm and I, and I, and I, and I, full disclosure, I am, you know, this is my first time really paying attention. It's the first time I actually seen this program have like a vision, not just to be great, but want to, to have the energy to be great. And it's nothing to take away from Irk or Stowers or Paul Johnson. They didn't, to me, they didn't necessarily have the vision to be great. Now, I would want to say I was young, so I didn't see it. So they, maybe people who are older would know this. Now, I will defer to that. With them, what I saw, I saw uh, just a, a demand to be great. It's like, you know, when you saw Eric Russell, he wanted you to do right, be right, and, and, and execute on the field. You know, when I saw Paul Johnson, Paul Johnson, he was a great coach, and he demanded. And, you know, there was a little bit he had a vision as well, because I saw a little bit more of that, but he wanted excellence. And it showed even when he left to go to Navy and when he came to Georgia Tech. One thing you can say about Paul Johnson he put it out there that he wanted excellence and, and, and he, he wanted nothing less. And it showed. So when you turn around and you say you see that, then you double back and you see now, it's like the vision of the AD, the vision of uh, Coach Helton. It's like they want to be great. They talked about having a platinum standard, not just to be the best in a group of five. That the. Coach Clay Helton and Jared Binker wanted to be the next Cincinnati. That's what they want to be. They want to be the next Cincinnati. And no telling how things may go down the road with these Power 5 conferences. You don't know if, if, if any of these teams in the group of five, 5, 10, 15 years from now, will end up being a Power 5 team in a Power 5 conference. Hell, the group of five, the Sun Belt may become one of those that be as prestigious as a Power 5 conference. You know, so when you look at these things, there's a reason. And, 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 and you know, I, and I, I may sound like a little off, but I want you to follow me a little bit. I think there's a reason why Coach Helton brought himself and this staff to Georgia Southern. Because maybe they have a vision that these group of five teams can be on the same level or they'll probably have more opportunities to be as successful as these uh, power five teams. That this is why I love the talk between the group of five and power five, but I still, even with the talent discrepancy in some cases, 
I still feel that these group of five teams, especially in the Sun Belt, can compete with Power Five teams, a majority of the Power Five teams, and I don't feel that we are less than what they have. The only difference I feel that there's less than that we're we're behind in is budget. Because I feel if we had the budget, I think we could recruit any of these players that are out here. Jordan and, and name recognition. And I think the name recognition is starting to taper off a little bit. I think the a lot of these Sun Belt teams are starting to get the name recognition just as well as some of these Power Five teams. So it's not really as pro it's not as as a big of a gap. I think the biggest thing is just money, money and budget. I think that's it. So with that being said, I feel that Coach Helton and Jared Banko has a vision that something's great is going to happen. Something awesome is going to happen at Georgia Southern and with the group of five teams. I can't wait to see what happens and how it happens because I think this team is going to be on the rise to where we're going to be very successful. It just, it just feels like it's going to be successful. I really like what I see here, and I'm going to be talking about it every step of the way. So kudos to Jared Binko and Clay Helton. Those guys have a very good vision. And the vibe and the and the the vibe and the connection they have with one another when they're talking about football, I love every bit of it, and I can't wait to see more of it. And I want to see more of it come to fruition when it comes to them being uh actually what well, with Coach Helton actually performing his duties as head coach. Can't wait to see that happen. So that's I'm going to close out on that topic right now. I want to talk about Calvin Ridley real real quick. Everybody's talking about what in the world Calvin Ridley is doing, taking pictures on Instagram, and um, he's responding to certain people on Twitter. There's been a notion out there or a, a, a take out there saying that Calvin Ridley's, um, let's see, his mental health is nobody's business. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I 100% agree. I 100% agree. It's nobody's business what he's going through. Let him deal with that. I hope the brother get as much help as he, uh, that he needs if he needs it. But it's none of our business to find out what it is. The only people that need to worry about it is close family and the people in the circle. That's it. So with that being said, I will say, please trade this guy. <laughs> I, I I know some people that probably ain't going to be in the comment section or people that's going to give me feedback on Twitter is be like, no, we can still use him. He just need to cut bounce back and get better. No, I, you know, I, I want him to bounce back and be better. Go ahead and trade him. It, it, money wise, it's not going to hurt. You could possibly get a first or a second round for him, and you can get everything under the sun that it will help build this team going forward. I don't. I'm not saying I don't trust him. I just don't feel like. Look, I think the feeling should just be mutual. If he doesn't want to be on the team because of mental health, because he has other things that's on his mind, let him deal with that. But as a as a team and the way things are going. Let him go to another team. Maybe it'll work out for both parties where he can be uh, more, much more inclined to play football and we can get something in return to keep moving forward. That's how I feel about that. So if you guys want to let me know, please let me know in the comment section, either on Rumble or YouTube or just send me a message on um, Twitter. Let me know what you guys think about that. I, I just don't have anything else to say about Calvin Ridley. I hope he gets the help he needs. It's none of our business or whatever he's going through. But I just feel like at the end of the day, I talked about this all the time. Just trade him. I see no problem with trading him. Last but not least, before we get up out of here, I want to talk about the wide receiver um, take that Todd Mache had in his mock draft saying that we're going to get a number eight. Uh, at number eight, we're going to get a wide receiver. I, I don't believe any of this. I don't believe that. I will be highly shocked and I will be, I'll probably be legitimately upset if we take a wide receiver at number eight with all the help that we need at pass rush. And I don't think there's not one wide receiver worth the top 10 pick in this draft. So with that being said, something that, I don't know what Todd Mache is thinking. Maybe he knows something we don't know, but we definitely need to get a pass rush. And I think we need to go in and get it at number eight. Or I'm not against getting Stingley, the cornerback, at number eight. But we need to go defense. Wide receivers, are, there's a handful of wide receivers that are in the draft. I think we'll be able to get a couple. Also, I think there's some in free agency I think we can get. Um, yes, I do know that there's a lot of players that are um, – I know, yes, I know there's a lot of players that are out here that are edge rushers that are in the draft as well. I get it. 
There's a lot of talent on the edge rusher side, but you need to get the best one and the best one available. Don't wait till the fourth round to try to get one, and all of a sudden we got another, um, um, oh, man, what's his name? Edwards? I think his name was Edwards. Number nine, or, or another Tack McKinley. Let's get somebody out here that's going to rush the pass and, not, and, and, and cause some problems in the trenches. I don't, I don't buy it. I'm not here for it, and I'm not going to follow up with it. I just feel that, um, yes, we do need a wide receiver, but I don't think we need one at number eight. We could probably get one in the second round. We got two picks in the second round. Why would we do it at eight? And then, and be honest with you, the the wide receiver that Todd Mache is talking about, I don't even agree with. Let me see. Let me look at this up and make sure. Yeah, it's a circle, baby. And my son is here once again, everybody. My son is here, and he's always having fun with me. Um, all right, let's see. Todd McShay saying, oh, it, it, it doesn't have it up here. It, it doesn't know, but all I know, he wanted a wide receiver. So um, that's what I saw before, and um, I just don't see it now. So I guess it's gone. I don't know. So with that being said, I just... Maybe you guys can find it better than I can, but it, it was on the mock draft. I saw it earlier, but it's not showing up on Twitter now. But nevertheless, it, it is what it is. Um, I just feel that, that there's no way that we take a receiver. There's no way. There's no way. And just I just don't see it. Oh, here it is right here. Top Mache mock draft, drafting Drake London. Sorry for the wait, everybody. Um... I, I I I don't I don't I don't see I don't see it. The Drake London is okay. I don't have nothing against him. Um, I think he's a pretty good receiver, but I don't think he's a, a number eight type of no. I, I just don't see it. If anything, uh, now I, I I can't even. I just don't see it. I mean, you know, one thing I do notice that I did not know this. He's six foot five. I didn't know that. So. That's interesting. And um he's six foot five and he's uh he, he broke his right ankle in October, but his junior season he had 88 receptions for 1084. Okay, I kind of see where this is going. I, I got but I, I just don't get it, but I I don't see them passing up on the pass rush. I just don't see it. I just don't. I I, I see where it is because you got somebody at six five. Who can, you know, who has, to, you know, have size? Yeah, I see it. But no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold. So Drake London is a product of Clay Helton. I think Clay Helton uh, uh, pretty much recruited him. I mean, Clay Helton is a great recruiter, man. Great recruiter. But no, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm just looking at this. I understand it when you need a, a big time receiver, but to be honest, if we can get one, I honestly say if we can get one in free agency, if we can get a decent receiver in free agency and get another receiver later on in the draft, I'll be okay. That'll be just as good as getting this player right here. But I, I just don't. Mm. The pass rush, man. I, I I will be I'll be surprised and 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 low key upset at this. That's just me. I I think that we should go ahead and get a, a pass rusher and um we can get receivers later on. But I do understand this. A, a guy at six foot five who did this well. The only another reason why I would not want to get him in the at number eight because he did break his right ankle. It's an injury, so I don't know how does that injury look. You know, does that injury, is it, you know, uh, Kirk telling his, you know, is it Kirk telling his vision, his, his, his uh, potential? So, I don't know. I mean, with us, we only have 18 sacks last season. And I, I think I want that pass rush. We need somebody. We need somebody out there because at the end of the day, well, because at the end of the day, I mean, Matt Ryan can make some receivers do something. You know, if we get a better, uh, better couple of uh, receivers that was a little bit better than Russell Gage that actually could play at number two, or you know, you know, that can actually you know play number two or number one, I think we'll be fine as far as passing the ball. We still got a good receiver with um the Kyle Pitts. He's a tight end, but he's shown that he can do something. So I don't know. 
Um, I'm not. I, we're gonna. You know, we definitely going to look at this later on down the road. There's gonna be more talk about this because now I'm looking at this and I see where the. I see where the vision is on that, but I just don't see it at number eight. I, I just don't know. I, I don't think Drake London is going to be available the second round, but I just don't see it at number. I just, I don't see it. I don't know what you guys think. I'm going to close it out there. Um, pretty much like a free fall, various topics. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you like this content, the like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you haven't already, uh, give me a five star rating if you're listening to the podcast side uh, on the star chart and leave some feedback. I love to hear some feedback. Shout out to the person who gave me feedback earlier this month. You you were amazing. Thank you for that. And um, I would not mind if more guys do give feedback. Also, if you feel like in your heart to donate to help this podcast grow, you know, with extra equipment I could use, other things that could be in the room or whatever the case may be to give it a better setting. Um, Because equipment, I don't have a problem with equipment, but there are some things I do want to get and I probably will. But, you know, with the donations that would basically expedite that uh, that process. So that would be awesome. Either way, I'm just happy that you guys are listening. I really, really appreciate it. And um, you guys enjoy your weekend. You know, share this podcast. Let people know what we're doing over here. It's the off season, but it's always good content and good news to talk about. And when the season comes, by the time the season comes, we'll have a good bit of people over here listening to first and frame rates where we talk about sports, mostly Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great weekend. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.